or Kent or Ford or in, in Louisiana, 1943. Came to Portland in 1961. Never decided I was going to make it my home, you know, at 73 years old, I'm just still here. So I guess it is my home. I live, uh, actually, I live right there several blocks from here, on Central Farrell Street, a couple of houses off Williams. We're really diverse, you know. We had barbecue, barbecue places, you know, we had uh, soda fountains, uh, nightclubs, uh, uh, bookstores, and uh, funeral parlors. I, I had a real, real convenient place, you know, right around the corner from one of the major nightclubs, you know, which was a cotton club. I could just walk two blocks and I was there. He always had talent from out of town coming, you know, Coco Taylor, Big Mama Thornton, Ike and Tina Turner there, Bobby Blue Bland, Ray Charles. It was, uh, it was actually real nice. Well, you know, the 60s came along and uh, everything was kind of topsy-turvy, you know, with the Vietnam War, the Civil Rights Movement, and uh, anybody that wanted to get involved, you know, how, how can we integrate ourselves into this? So there was a lot of local stuff going on, you know, demonstrations against uh, places like Fred Myers and a lot of local places that discriminated against uh, minority people. I get right here on Williams and Russell, right here on the corner, and I see the brothers and sisters out there, and, and, I, and I would see a group of people's brothers standing on the corner, I'd say, hey, brother, I said, look at the way they're treating us. I said, the city is completely written off this area. The only people who come over here is, is the police. And I would say, look, look what they're doing in Vietnam. Look what they're doing here. You know, look, look how they're treating us here. I said, we don't have to live this way. And then we we call a meeting for say Wednesday night or Friday night and stuff like that. We get fifty, a hundred people, seventy five, hundred people there, and we lay out the whole platform and program. Here's what we're gonna do. And following Martin Luther King real close, I was studying some of the things that he was doing and some of the hits he was taking, and what really turned the tide for me though was those four little girls got bombed in a church in Birmingham, Alabama. Of course, uh, the assassination of Malcolm X and. 65, and then you had, you know, Martin Luther King assassination in April of 68. Oh man, my heart just sank. Going out to the street is easy. That's real easy. You got to organize, 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 educate, educate, educate. And then you, you can go out to the streets. And we start organizing them down here. But 19, 1968. And uh, the breakfast program, that was just a program where the kids came in the morning. And we would feed it. We fed over 20,000 kids a, a, a week at the, at the breakfast program. We did over 100,000 sickle cell needing tests nationwide. I got a call one day from a young man uh, who was in an organization called Health Rep. And uh, he called me up and he said, I hear you guys talking about setting up a health clinic. I said, yeah, we are. And, and uh, he went down a complete list of all the doctors in the Monoma County Medical Society and been calling, been calling them and asking would they volunteer. The clinic was open from seven to 10, five days a week. So the clinic was for everybody. It was multiracial. Well, along came the uh, Emmanuel Hospital relocation and expansion. And what they were doing, they were devaluing people's places and then buying them out. So you had other people who actually would take a stand, say, I'm not just not selling, I'm just not selling. And, and uh, they try to put the squeeze on them. This guy here, he was with the State Department. So he called me up one day and said, say, Kent, can we go get a cup of coffee? I said, sure, man, we can do that. And we was talking, and he said, uh, how soon can you guys get out of here? I said, oh, give us a couple of weeks. Well, the next day I show up at the clinic, and then I broke in, and, and he showed up. I said, say, man, I thought you, we had a couple of weeks. 
you know, and he just didn't tell, he just didn't level with me. What we did. Nobody's told us we had to do it. Nobody paid us. We wasn't on any payroll. We didn't take any money from outside sources, especially corporations. And uh, it's just this old down home street corner organizing. And uh, we picked that up for Malcolm, what, what he was doing in, in, in Harlem. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 we we didn't didn't want to we didn't want to make chumps out of us, uh, or, or just to brush us off. They tried to, but we just kept, kept kept hitting and coming back, hitting and coming back. Don't work this way, work it another way. Don't work that way, work it another way. Just keep shifting and moving. Like Muhammad Ali would say, "Float like a butterfly, stay like a bee."